Okay, well, this will probably be the most different kind of speech you've heard. Because really, what I'm here for is a job interview. I want this job. I'm going to give you some of my qualifications. The things that are really deep down inside me, the things that I believe, so that you don't even have to question where I stand and if I'm going to stand for the things that you believe in too. Making America great again. That was a great slogan. Let me tell you, I have a picture. Ronald Reagan for president, let's make America great again. It's been hanging over my fireplace. I've had that picture since 1980. But you know, we can make America safer. We can make it more prosperous. We can make it more respected. But we will never ever make it great again until we honor and recognize the God who made it great the first place. <laughs> Freedom and liberty come from God. You know, I've had a lot of jobs I'm, a, I'm still a professional paintball player, but uh, I've been a bus mechanic, I've been a radio announcer, I, and you name it, I've, I've, I've just about done everything. And I've enjoyed all of them, but the one I've enjoyed the most is that of being a chef. And as a chef, I could tell you, that when you go in the kitchen, you set up a pot of soup, and you invite another 100 chefs in there, each one of them will go by that pot and add something he thinks is going to make it a little better. That's what we have in Washington right now. We already had a formula for freedom and liberty, and we've got a whole bunch of politicians that think they know better. Those ideas came from God, and there is a recipe out there. Has anybody here heard of the Liberty Matrix? Do you know there's a 180-ton granite statue that stands above Plymouth Harbor? in a residential area that hardly anybody knows about that has the full recipe of how we have freedom and liberty. It was put there so that if we ever lost our way, we would have something to go back to instead of trying to think we know how to do it ourselves. That blueprint starts with a statue on the top named Faith. It's a lady who's pointing up to God with one hand and a Geneva Bible in the other because knowledge comes from God. We are a Christian nation, and it's about time we started acting like it and quit apologizing for it. We are founded on Christian principles, and we need to restore those convictions. You know, the second statue that is part of this conglomeration is called morality. She has no eyes because she's looking inward, because morality comes from inside. You know, we used to teach morality in school up until about the 1960s. The Bible was used for over 300 years. We taught right and wrong. The golden rule was actually on the wall when I attended second grade at Long Prairie Elementary. We can no longer let people call good evil and evil good. The laws and principles, the, the, the third statue that's on there is called law. Those principles are God's laws, and those laws extend into civil law. There's very few major laws that are not based on the Ten Commandments, but we've taken them out of our schools. A prison attorney, you know, one of those guys that's in there for life who's got his degree now, once said that there's 100,000 laws out there that'll put you in jail. And I say there's 10 of them that'll keep you out. <laughs> the next statue is called Education. It is a statue of a lady teaching her son from the Bible because fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And a small carving of an older, bearded man, which symbolizes wisdom, 
is standing next to a tablet of the Ten Commandments in a stack of books, and next to him is a globe, symbolizing the biblical world view. That's the type of view, as your senator, I would have. The final statue, and it seems strange that they would commemorate the pilgrims with this kind of a statue, but this guy, I mean, he's buff. He's got muscles. And he's, I mean, he's the he-man of all he-men. And he's up there and he's got a sword. He's got a lion skin draped over his shoulders, symbolizing the fact that he defeated England. He's got the broken chains and the shackles in his hands because he's a free man. But liberty and freedom are only fleeting. His eyes are very alert because he's watching. Liberty and freedom are only one generation away from being gone. On the side of that statue is Liberty Man with his foot on tyranny. We're having tyranny in our own country now. That's why we have the Second Amendment. And if you read our Declaration of Independence, that Second Amendment is there. It is a God-given right, not a man-given right. And not only that, to bear arms is not only a God-given right, but it is a God-given duty, they said. Right in, the, right in that Declaration of Independence, it's a duty. That is why shall not be infringed was added to that Bill of Rights. But that statue contains that recipe. We need senators there that will follow that recipe. Let's go back to that original recipe. Let's straighten America out. A man named Edward Everett was asked to give a speech. He got up and spoke for two hours. The next man who was supposed to speak got up and spoke for two minutes. His final sentence was that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and the government of the people, by the people, and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Donald Trump brought back that birth of freedom. We had eight years of Obama. We thought that shining city on the hill, that the lights were going out. They are not. They are being relit. And we, the people, are doing it. We are the spark that will light the fire, that will restore the republic. That will make a good movie line. <laughs> a couple of you got it. I am pro-life, I am pro-constitution. There's nothing more I can say, really say about that. But my convictions run deep. But you know something? In our education system, we have lost a lot. Our children have been told they came from monkeys. They've had God's laws taken away from them. They've been put on Ritalin and Adderall. They've been told they don't, they can do anything they want, but when they went into depression, we gave them the drugs. So they don't know where they're coming from. They don't know where they're going. And now we're telling them they don't even know what they are. It is time to take the education system away from the federal government and bring it back to the local area. You know, we the people, though, need to be the people. We need to be the people that take over the lower offices, the school boards, the city councils, the counties. We the people need to do the groundwork if we're going to win this election. We the people 
need to be the people that erect that elect the right people. But we the people need to be the people that don't do the easy thing. Because this is not going to be easy. We don't need to do the expedient thing. And I told Karn I wasn't talking about her when I was going to say this. <laughs> but now is not the time for a pretty face. <laughs> Now is not the time for Minnesota nice. And now is not the time to send somebody to the U.S. Senate who got good grades and playing nice. Now is the time for the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I fit all three. <laughs> I want to go there to straighten things out. I want to go there to fix things. I want to go there to return the power back to the people just like Donald Trump said it should be done. When he said that, and he picked Mike Pence for a vice president, I'm going, there's something about this guy I really like. You know, I, I still got five minutes here, and I've almost run out of things that I wrote down to say. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm really glad to be here. I look forward to moving forward with this. I would appreciate your endorsement. This is my job interview with you. I can tell you from my heart that I promise to do those things which would make God happy. I answer to him first and to you second. It used to be part of everybody's pledge when they got to be, in order to be in public office, you had to say it, that you believed in God, and that you believed in the Bible, and you believed that every decision that you were going to make, you were going to have to answer to God for. And that's what I believe. You know, we are being judged here on this earth as a country, because up in heaven no countries exist. We were judged for eight years. We need to change that. We got a good start. He needs help. I want to go there. I want to help him. I want to do the right things that are going to make America great again. And I don't know if, how many of you noticed this or not. I'm a Rush Limbaugh fan. I have over 30 of these highs. I got to wear a different one every place I went to speak. And I saved this one just for you. <laughs> but there are a lot of conservatives out there. There are 50% of the people out there who don't even vote in this country which means about 25% are the ones that are electing our elected officials. We need to get those people back in. That fire that he's started, that spark that he's got going, we need to fan those flames. We need to help every single candidate out there. And it's going to hurt because we're going to have to give. But we, the people, need to be the people. I guess maybe I'll just quit. <laughs> I could say a lot more, but if I started, it would take way too long. I, I, I'll get too excited. But, and I, I'm lucky I'm even able to speak today. On Monday and Tuesday, my sinus infection went from here down to here. I could barely talk. So I was glad to be able to get my voice back today. God gave it back to me just for this. And I thank you very much. I thank you for your time, and I'd appreciate your support.